All right, guys, welcome back. My name's Daniel. You are watching Five Minutes with the Technician. So today, I'm going to show you how to program a shower pan on your K600. So I get this question a lot, and everyone asks me, can I program a shower pan on the K600 using the finger bit or our uh, incremental bit? Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys, there's, it's just one of those things where it's like proper tooling, you know, leads you to success. Um, so I personally don't recommend that you use the incremental bit to mill out a shower pan. Uh, I've had a lot of customers try it and there's a lot of mixed results. Uh, and not to mention that some of those programs, I've seen them take like on, on like, if you use time study on your alpha cam, they'll take like 12 hours or something crazy. Okay, so it's one of those overnight things. But, I mean, usually you lose so much length on that finger bit by the time you've ran it that long. Like, your Z levels are all over the place. Um, so, first thing before we even get into this, let's talk about proper tooling. Okay, so for me, I would recommend getting one of these babies. Get yourself a gauge wheel, okay? I mean, this is like anything that we do. Um you wouldn't try to cut porcelain or decton with like any old blade, you know? And if you have, you've probably ran into a couple of little issues. Um, so, you know, call up Mark Lazon and get yourself a gauge wheel. Uh, he sells this brand, this Defcon. I've used this one personally. I liked it. I mean, I think a lot of other companies make a gauge wheel too, but um, this is the one I used. Um, yeah, anyways, what you'll need for this gauge wheel to work is this adapter. Contact Sasso Parts Department if you don't have this adapter. Any K600 in like the last like four years came with this. Okay, they all came with this adapter. So if you have it, great, you're in great shape. If you looked at it and thought, what the hell is that for? And you threw it away, eh, you might wanna call the parts department and we can get you one. But uh, look around for this thing. This is very important, this adapter. Uh, but yeah, get a gauge wheel, guys, please. The incremental bit is like, I've had people, I've had people try to do like tool changes in the middle of the program to use the incremental bits, um, all sorts of different things to like try to make it work. And, you know, I've had some people do it successfully. I've had other people, um, you know, call me upset and crying that it took 12 hours and it, you know, it still has longer to go or something. Uh, get a gauge wheel, you know, any like router they wouldn't use like an incremental bit to to do this you know they'd use like a gauge wheel or something so with that being said let's get into this a bit okay so how to program a shower pan on your sasso k600 first thing that we need to do let's check our tool directions okay let's click on ghost tools let's see what we have going on here okay so i just imported this dxf from kohler um so what we're going to need to do here if we look at this i want all of my tool directions set to the inside for this because I want to mill the inside of that, the inside of that, and the inside of that. Okay, click on tool directions. Go to inside. Okay, you can click on that one, this one, and this other one. There we go, they're all on the inside. That is ideal. Okay, go ahead and close that. So the next thing we need to do is activate the shower base machining tab so come into save and special tools go to add-ins click on add-ins scroll down this list go to shower base machining there it is click on that and then click ok okay so now you could do a command search and find it but i want to add it into my toolbar so click on file click on customize then go to customize ribbon so let's find it here Go to all commands, scroll down this list, go to shower base, and let's add it into save and special tools and our special tools. Boom. Go ahead and export that. So click import slash export, click on export. This is just saving this configuration. There we go. And then we can close that. Okay, go ahead and hit save while you're there. Boom. So now when we reopen Alpha Cam, it should still have this. That's why I hit save. Otherwise, it'll dump it out, and uh, you won't have it anymore. So 
Now, going further, let's go ahead and select our tool we want to use. Click Select Tool, go to Gauge Wheel, click, and click again. There we go. Click on Shower Base. Okay, I've kind of already filled this information in. Uh, so I've got a two inch rapid level above the stone. I've got a half inch rapid down. So that's going to go above the stone a half of it, half of an inch, and then it'll go slow into the stone. Okay, my final depth at profile. So they call this the profile. So this 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 rim here. So uh, yeah, we'll do an eighth of an inch. That's good. And then the final depth at the hole will be three eighths. Okay, the step. So I've got a five inch gauge wheel. So my diameter is five inch. So we'll want to do a step less than five, obviously. So you could go 4.5, you could go four. Um, whatever you kind of want to do, I'm going to do four. Um, I don't know. It'll take a little bit longer, but uh, the end result will probably be a little bit smoother too. It might be like marginal. But um, Moving on. So the stock to be left, I'm going to set that at 0 0.03. So it's about a 30 second. So what that means is that that five inch gauge wheel is going to come up to this edge and it's going to stop a 30 second before it reaches this uh, this geometry line. So that's good. That's fine because I'm going to do a cleanup pass, like a, a finish pass around this anyways. Okay, we're going to start. Oh, our cutting method is one way. So for me, I've heard that gauge wheels you typically don't want to cut bi-directionally. You want to cut one way. So go ahead and cut. It's going to raise up then it's going to cut again, raise up and cut again. It's going to take a little bit longer, but I don't know the reasoning behind this. I've just heard that when you're running a gauge wheel, typically you run it one direction. Um, but if I'm wrong, please let me know. I, I, I don't know. You know, I'm just speaking from uh, what other people have told me. So start cutting at the hole. So we're going to start at the hole and work our way outward. Okay, cutting options along the profile. That's fine. It's going to follow this geometry line. Okay, we don't need to really play around with our tool data too much. Um, down feed. This might be like a really slow down feed, but um, truthfully, uh, I always tell people I'm not really in the business of like, you know, crashing the machine or, you know, <laughs> causing disasters. So I usually, you know, I would run it pretty slow. You know, definitely like set the speed down to like 1% at the very start. You know, and just kind of listen to it, see what it's doing, make sure you've got good water, and then ease into it. You know, don't just like blast into it, you know, because that's typically how things uh, go sideways. Okay, this all looks good. Go ahead and click OK. Okay, so now at the bottom it says shower base, select hole geometry. So let's go ahead and select the hole. So boom, there's our center hole, and now we can select the profile. Okay, there we go. So if we look at this in the simulation, go to solid sim buzz through this we have made a really nice weird flower thing you know your eccentric customer wanted this flower sink there we go <laughs> you know i'm just kidding uh, we're gonna do a finish pass and clean this up because uh, i don't think anyone wants that there might be someone but i don't let's get rid of that let's do a finish pass around this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to machining styles and I would probably use like this 3CM partial with lead in. Go ahead and right click, click on apply. And there we go. Okay, so this is going to use the finger bit. So I'm going to change that because I want to use that uh, gauge wheel. So go to your operations. Go ahead and find that cut. So it's right here. It says finger bit. Right click on it and go to edit. Go ahead and click on change tool and go to your gauge wheel. So I've got it selected. Go ahead and left click, and then it changes. Okay, let's set our final depth to an eighth of an inch. And let's set our number of cuts. We could probably do that in one cut. Machining data, let's set that to zero. And lead in, lead out. This is These are my default settings for lead in, lead out. Um, yeah, I mean, you could set this to whatever you'd like. You might not even need a lead in, but uh, for me, I'm gonna run one with this program. Let's go ahead and click okay. Boom, you see the tool changed. And there we go. So it's gonna do the shower base first, and then it's going to do the finish pass around the border. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and get the hole going. 
Um, so before I get too far along, I, I forgot this. Um, so on your Sasso, we are, we're going on the, the assumption that the top of the stone is equal to zero. So the top of your material in AlphaCam, we treat it like the top of the stone is zero and the bottom, like the top of your table is negative three CM or two CM, you know, whatever you set it to. So for this example, uh, I've kind of like drew a little diagram here. So zero being the top of the stone, our profile has this eighth inch cut there. Okay, if we go to the hole, we'll see we've got three eighths deep there. And then I'm gonna put like an eighth inch lip right here for our shower drain. So that'll be a half inch depth right there. Okay, and then the final depth to cut all the way through something will be like a 10th over uh, three CM. So there's that. Okay, so with that being said, let's go back to here. Let's go ahead and go back into our machining styles. So for these holes, let's go ahead, let me turn these off so I can see a little bit better. Come back into machining styles, right click, click on apply style. So I'm gonna apply one there, right click and apply a style there. Okay, so I know this one's going to be a full depth cutout. Like if I watch the simulation, boom, 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 they're going to both be full depth. I just wanna change this one. So let's go to operations. So you can tab through these or you can click find and you can click on that one and it'll show you where it's at. Go ahead and right click, click on edit. Go to your levels and cuts. So remember I said we're going to do a half inch deep here. So go to final depth, let's go negative 0.5. And um, the rest of this is fine. We don't need a lead in or anything like that for that. Just go ahead and click OK. Let's go back here. I guess I can turn my ghost tools off. Let's go ahead and turn these back on. And let's see what we look like now. Boom. OK, so let's let me shift these operations around because I kind of want the finger bit to go first. Now, so like you see this like this chunk in the center, this circular cutout. What I would probably recommend is, you know, you might put a tab on here, honestly. Um, or, so like it's going to do the finger bit and then it's going to wait for a tool change anyways. I would pluck this thing out. I would take it out and then proceed with your gauge wheel. Uh, reason is, is you're gonna have this thing totally loose and you put a five inch gauge wheel on top of it and then you try to move I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it might be fine. It might be totally catastrophic. Um, let's not find out. So after the finger bit runs, take this center piece out. Just, you know, grab it and then start your program again with the gauge wheel. Okay, so there's that. There's our shower base. Let's say we want to add some saw cuts to this. Okay, so this is the part that usually trips people out. So uh, let's go to draw and manipulate. So what we need to do, is click on change, go ahead and go geometry to construction, and click okay. We're going to change all of the internal geometry of this project to construction. And I don't think I have any other geometry, so that's good. Okay, now we can apply some saw blades to this. So go ahead and click on Sasso tools, go ahead and hit cut parts, select your blade and then hit cut parts. Okay, so if we watch the simulation, it's gonna go ahead and do the finger bit, then the gauge wheel, then the blade. Boom, there it is. There's a beautiful shower pan. Let's see how long this will actually take out on the machine. So let's type in time. So time study is kind of nifty. Uh, if you, you type in the command search and nothing pops up, go to your add-ins and, what is it? Uh, Oh, I think it's alpha study is what they call it. Yeah, anyways, um, time study. Machine tool rapid rate is 30,000. Efficiency rate, so that's the percentage on the dial. So let's say conservatively, let's run it at 25%. Let's say like, you know, that gauge was hogging out like three eighths deep here and going outward. 
you're probably not going to run it at a hundred percent. You know, I mean, I don't know. Listen to it. Start out really slow. Start out at like 1%. Listen to it. You know, if it starts squealing, try turning it up a little bit and then, uh, you know, just kind of feel it out. Anyways, uh, efficiency rate. Let's leave it at 25%. Let's see where we're at. Okay. So at 25% of the max speed, it's going to take about two hours for this uh, shower pan. Not too bad, honestly. Um, really not too shabby. If we look at the sh actual shower base machining time, uh, you're looking at like an hour there. So, I mean, that's, that's the majority of it. But I'm telling you, this is way faster than using a incremental bit. Uh, an incremental bit, like I've helped people in the past. And like, if you do a time study, like some of them are like insanely long. And then by the time you get through with it, the bit is so worn down, it's like not even doing anything anymore. Like it won't like touch or it'll, you know, it'll be like high over here or your hole won't cut out quite right. So just to go over it again, if you're going to be doing a lot of shower bases or even, you know, if you even kind of want to try to do one, honestly, get yourself a gauge wheel. Um, like I said, it can be done with an incremental bit, but um, I, I've... I've had a lot of mixed results, you know, I've, I've helped people in the past and, uh, eh, I don't know. It's, I've had enough mixed results to not really recommend using an incremental bit, but I'm totally open. If someone has some process that they use, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to listen. And honestly, I'll make a video and we can do a, an incremental bit video. I'm totally down with that. Just let me know if you have something that works for you or some, killer bit that uh, you think it will do the job for a 12 hour program awesome let's do it anyways all right guys thanks for watching uh if you have any questions feel free to give me a shout all right thanks